<clears throat> Sunny evening up here in the skybox, in the corner of the level. Makes you think of peaceful, simpler times. Times when Res Mason didn't break his promise to stream every Wednesday for three hours straight. How's it going? Thanks for tuning in. I'm Rez. This is Wireworld. Am I gonna go through the spiel? Wireworld is a cool thing where things have four colors and those colors change based on a simple set of rules. And over the past few months on Wednesdays, we've been making tons of changes across all these episodes to make it run faster. And by faster, I mean, here's it running. Here's it running at the same speed that the graphics of a web page update. And if I turn on turbo here, this is as fast as it can go on my computer while I'm streaming. The speed that it's going when turbo mode is on is down here in the corner. It says it's around 3300, which is steps per second, where clicking this is one step. There we go. Off we go. We have done 120,000 steps since I turned on turbo, more or less. So it's pretty fast. This is a rehash of a Flash project from 11 years ago. One of the things that the Flash version has, <clears throat> excuse me, that this version doesn't have until very recently is the ability to go up here and say like engine equals engine 2, which would replace the algorithm, the function that actually simulates stuff. Uh, and obviously the color theme. Uh, it would replace those um, so that you could run those and compare their speeds. And because the speed has changed so, dra <clears throat> so drastically since we began, um, I think it makes sense to add support for that to this project. Um, and I'll talk about how we did that during my very brief uh, episode last week. Um, it's worth a rehash, a revisit. Um, but also last week we identified one, two, three, four, five variations of the engine that can kind of punctuate what changes we made over time to get it as fast as it currently is. And our hope is we can take Engine.js and modify it like this, Engine2.js, modify some of this code to resemble code from these snapshots earlier in the project, but still benefiting from the bug fixes and the architecture that we've settled on in the meantime. So a lot of this stuff is actually going to be extracted into a sort of engine core.js file that we will import into all the engines. That'll be one of our first steps. We haven't done that yet. Uh, what we have done is every engine now represents a color theme. And so this color that we're seeing is provided by engine2.js. Here it is. Um, that is passed into the setup message, which is an expansion of a message that previously existed. One second. Engine. Right. We used to just pass the grid indices to the main thread, which would hand them to the renderer. Now we're passing everything 
the renderer only needs the data that comes from this setup uh, message to fully initialize itself. And so wireworld.js is no longer responsible for calling paper dot initialize data. Instead, paper initialize is passed those arguments from the worker. So we've got that. Um, the theme is in there, uh, and the theme is also in the, um, let me expand this context, there we go, the theme is also in the render message, because why not? Um, yep, and then in wireworld.js, so remember, engine.js is a web worker, and so rather than declare it in wireworld.js as a new worker uh, based on JS engine JS we put it in its own folder engines which is where all the engines are going to live and their core their shared uh, code the file name of the engine is based on the engine name that is put up here so engine 2 is a temporary engine name this is this is temporary, I think. Eventually there will be like some UI for this. Um, the problem with that is uh, we'd have to figure out how to swap the state between the engines, which is a problem we've solved before when Turbo used to destroy and recreate uh, web workers. So we will, we will get to the UI stuff after we get these engines built, um, these ones. Naive, Alive, Neighbors, Linked, and Flat. Okay. Um, so yeah, that that name is looked up in a new map called Engine File Names by Name. So default is Engine. That's the one that has the most advanced this and that. And then all the other ones are going to go down here. And actually, I will put them in right now. Um, we get the engine name from the URL parameters, and we default to the one called default. So let's grab all these. And in uh, wireworld.js, oops. Um, that's fine. And we'll call them these things. Um, flat. Flat is the one that already exists. So flat is engine. Mm -hmm. We just need to make the other four, right? already exists. Right. Okay, cool. Um, gonna go ahead and make these. So engine 2, we're gonna rename. No, we're not. Um, we're gonna keep this around. These are the themes that were in the Flash version of this project. And then Instead of this, this is the AS3 one. Here we go, engine two. We're gonna delete this. And we are going to, what are we going to do? For now, okay. Our first step is to extract the common code and use import scripts to add it to the engines. Import scripts is a relatively new command in JavaScript. It is the non-modular code equivalent of the import function. It allows you to just take JavaScript um, and shove it into the context of your code. So we're going to do this. Import, well, import scripts. Um, let's try this. Uh, engine common.js. And then engine common is going to be a new, 
Well, that's not handy. Engine common JS is now a file adjacent to it. And we can grab everything that we think should be common like this, uh, engine common JS. There's the old themes. What else should be common? Cell state, number formatter, max frame time, desired frame time. These should be common. Um, width, height, mem, first dates. Maybe width and height. Yep. And turbo active and turbo timeout and all that. That is common. All of our engines are going to have all this code. Neighbors, okay. Cell size last, this and that. Okay, that's common. Initialize. Um, reset. I'm not sure how much of that is going to be common for now. Render. Hmm. If turbo active. Yes, yeah, some of that will. Here we go. Advance, start turbo, stop turbo, reset turbo history. That is all common. And I think what we're going to do is let's see. Well, first, let's just test this. Well, that shouldn't work. There we go. And run. And it's still happy. Cool. That means that our import scripts command is working. It's grabbing all this stuff and it's putting it kind of at the top of its whole thing. That's great. Um, the next question is, how do we make this module? Hmm. What's the, loose, the solution to making this modular? We are going to make a function that does this and a function that does this. Let's see. So reporting the heads and tails is necessary for render. Almost like we're making a class that we're extending. Oh, I can do that. But do I want to do that? Because um, this is pretty straightforward. Um, I think I'm not going to have all the answers just yet, but we'll figure out some of it as we implement the naive renderer, uh, the naive engine. This is all fine. That's fine. I'm going to actually copy paste these methods. Okay, there's going to be a difference. There's going to be something called impl. So, okay. Um, const engine equals build engine. Initialize impl. 
Does advance need anything? It doesn't. Does reset need anything? Yes. Reset emble. Um, update. Update is in advance. It's in start turbo. Hmm. Right, okay. So, update. Yeah, there needs to be an update impl. I think that's it. Initialize impl, reset impl, update impl. Oh, right. Render impl. Update, reset, initialize. Initialize, reset, update, impl. Uh, render. Okay. Okay. So then in here, there's render. There's update, there's reset, there's initialize, and then this engine equals build engine const build engine this really is a class fine revert we are turning engine into a class Engine JS. ECMAScript const class. No, that's stupid. Do I really want to end up using class just because it would give me ES6 class syntax? So the question is, you see, ES6 classes, MDN please. Class allows you to say, this is an object, this is how it's built, this is how it's initialized, these are its methods. Um, and it essentially allows you to build an object, and you can subclass that object, you can extend it, which is kind of what Engine.js would do. I wonder if that'll slow it down. Actually, probably all of this abstraction is gonna slow it down a little bit. Just gotta think this through. You know what? I got this far without class syntax, syntax, and I'm gonna keep trying. Let's bring it back. Engine common still has all that stuff. Um, it's 
got methods that it shouldn't have yet. Um, you know, instead of build engine, no, build engine is fine. Okay. Okay. Enough second guessing myself. Build engine gets four functions. Impl, 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 impl. Reset, impl. Update, impl. And then render, impl. And these will probably get new names over time. Um, but, here's what's going to happen. <laughs> Const build engine equals initialize impl, reset impl, update impl, render impl. And it is going to create an object that replaces what we had. This. Initialize, initialize impl. Advance. Advanced needs, okay. Okay. Args. Args. Okay. So the initialize function is going to turn into a function that returns a function. And so width, height, all of this is initialization. Um, initialize impl. Data. Reset. Restored render. Reset. Reset. Initialize. Nope. This should be more explicit. Try this again. There we go. Oh. So basically, these named properties that previously were just references to functions are going to turn into things that generate functions. Yep. So initialize becomes a function that returns a function. And advance becomes a function that returns a function. Um, update impl, render impl. 
update, update. Ugh, this is gross. Turbo needs update. Update impl. And it needs render, doesn't it? Yep. Render impl. Um, down here, is there an update and a render? There isn't. Okay, you know what? This is fine. But return, so they're in there, and that means const update equals update update function equals update, update impl. Reset function equals reset, reset impl. Const render function equals render, render impl. That handles those three. And then initialize gets initialize impl render function. Advance gets update function render function. Reset is just reset function. Start turbo. Let me just check stop turbo real quick. Okay. That's fine. And then start turbo probably needs, it needs update and it needs render. Update function, render function. Is this at all acceptable? <laughs> nope. No. It's too gross. I'm sorry. It's too gross. Too gross. I've got to turn engine into a class. These values can sit outside of, yeah, yeah, these values can sit outside of a class. That's fine. So back to this, import scripts, engine common.js, making this again. Okay, cell state can go in there. In here we had the old themes. Old themes can go in there. Okay. Um, this theme, yep, is old themes default, right? Old themes default. Yes. These can go back in here. Thanks for your patience.
Okay. The data will sit outside of the engine. The engine will just be a bunch of functions. Turbo stuff. Turbo stuff. Okay, and so now, class engine, Whew, constructor, I don't think it really needs one because it's not actually going to be storing any data. Yeah, I can just have an empty constructor, initialize. data restored equals null yes six class arrow functions Good to know. Okay. That's fine. All of this initialize goes in here. I'll be honest, I did not expect to go this route. Reset. No need for equals. Yep. Everything inside reset. Properly indent. Update. You know what, I'm just gonna indent all these at first. Um, you know what? I can do that. Okay. Update is now a method. And render is now a method. Advance. Start turbo, stop turbo, reset turbo history, and then the rest of this is the weird stuff. Const engine equals new engine. Instead of being this stuff, here I'll just do self, and we can actually use the constructor. Worker. No, we don't need to do that, because self is going to be in there. API, API, this dot that, mm -hmm. I 
And because none of these actually use the this object, this should be fine. I think. We're about to find out. Errors already? Ah, right. Because... Reset. Okay, so... Um, that's fine. So reset. Reset turbo history. Render. This dot reset. This dot, this dot. This dot, this dot. This dot. This dot. Const update equals this dot update. This dot render. This dot loop turbo. Okay, let's see how that works out. Still, reset turbo history is not a function. Sure it is. Yeah, it's right there. So, what's up? It's not listing engine in the script. That's weird. You know what? I'm gonna try Firefox instead. There we go. 156, column 8. 156, column 8. Huh. Okay, that's why. Dot bind this. Loop turbo is not a function. Const loop turbo. There we go. Okay. It's behaving well over there. Let's try it in Safari. Seems to be behaving. Seems to be running really fast, actually. Kind of surprised. Um, okay. I just made a class. Where all the data is outside the class. Very weird.
going to bring those up and run the prettier. It has plenty of opinions. Oh, what is this? I don't know what difference that made, but here. Um, looks like it's entirely... Oh, no, that's fine. Okay. So we've turned engine into a class. That's a good first step. The whole point of this, of course, is to benefit from the, um... the subclass syntax. So this would be fine. Start turbo update would be fine. Um, reset turbo history. So this is all... None of this changes and none of this changes. Um, render changes. Head IDs. Yeah, you know what, that belongs in engine common. Head IDs and tail IDs. And let's see, cell grid indices. Okay, that can wait. Interesting. Okay. weird to fathom what parts basically go in the base class and what parts go into subclasses. Also, I wonder if this API object is even going to work. Because subclasses would presumably have different values for this.initialize, this.reset. We'll see. So, okay, class fast engine extends engine and engine is new fast engine. Still works, of course, and in initialize. Here's the first thing we're going to do. In the update function, we're going to grab all of this stuff, which is particular to the fast one. Update. Super dot update. And then put this in here. Update. Still works. And in just engine update does nothing. Okay, great. So actually, this idea that we have to subclass these methods is going to work out. I wasn't sure it was. So now fast engine can have its own update. And here, I'm going to move engine into engine common and 
so. Reset. Now this is the tricky stuff. Because we could put this, we could call this with super dot reset, but we want to do this first and then do these after we do all of our implementation specific stuff. So here's what I'll do. Instead of calling super dot anything, Okay, so now engine is back in here. So what we'll do instead is transfer everything that is specific to hmm. I wonder if there's a way to defer this somehow. It's like web worker. It's marshalling, isn't it? It's probably not. Um, message. Here, post message. Structured clone is internal. Okay, here's what I'll do. We're going to separate these. So, const cell grid indices equals initialize data restored renderer, restored render, that is. Post message that and then cell grid indices is zero. Yup, that's cool. So then in here, initialize data restored render equals null. This goes in here and then
Okay, let's try that. Failed. What's the problem? Initialize. Oh, right. This dot initialize. Uh, cell grid indices dot length. Oh, down here, return cell grid indices. There we are. Okay. So now our implementation stuff is isolated from initialize. And then with reset, restored render, we can do this. This dot reset, restored render. Reset, restored render. Still works. Update. This dot update. Update. Cool. Render. Render. This dot render. Render. Advance, start turbo, stop turbo. Let's just try all this. Ah. So now th this dot update dot bind this. There it goes. Pretty much the same speed as before from the looks of things. Okay, so now I can take this engine class and put it in engine common JS. And I can take all of the underscore methods and remove them. Or really, um, yeah. Initialize, boop, reset. Update, boop, render. That's it. And then in here, fast engine extends engine. Fast engine extends engine. This isn't necessary. Uh, initialize isn't necessary. Reset isn't necessary. Update isn't necessary. Render isn't necessary. And advance and start turbo and stop turbo and reset turbo history aren't necessary. Just the guts. Let's see if that works. It does. Huh. Who knew? Okay. Um, and Engine Common has our engine and all the things that our implementations should all share. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah, this is pretty neat. <laughs> Thank you.
and there's no reference of this dot anywhere in Engine.js, which is how it should be, because everything that it does is with these variables and the variables out here that are handled by the superclass. Essentially, we're using, yes, we are using classes, but those classes do not own their data. They are using data that is outside of them. It's weird. By Jove, it works. Um, and it's odd that it seems to be faster, at least in, fi in uh, Safari, um, than it was when we started the stream. I'm not going to read too deep into that for now. Hmm. Sorry, I know I just keep looking over it over and over again, but I'm just kind of surprised. All right, what does Prettier have to say about that? White space, white space. All right. Time to make the other engines. So this one is done. Okay. Now let's try to make an engine from scratch, referencing what we've previously done. So this new one is going to be called naive.js. And instead of fast engine, it's going to be naive engine. What theme? is it going to have? It's going to have Minty. Naive Engine. Restored. So reset. We're going to just leave it like that. Update. Empty. Render. Um, that is a little weird. Head IDs, tail IDs. I'm going to put that everywhere. Engine.js, render, head IDs, tail IDs. Um, I hope that's OK. Let's find out. It is. Cool. I don't know, it just sat kind of weird with me, you know? Everything else actually gets stuff passed into it, so... Cool. Okay. Let's try it. Engine equals naive. Can't find variable generation. Well, generation, whoopsie. common, let width, height, generation, there we are, amazing, our naive implementation is the fastest one there is, probably because it's doing absolutely nothing, so now naive is going to have to do some stuff. Um, but I'm also going to save it as the other ones. So 
We've got naive, we've got alive. Alive. And instead of naive, alive. I wonder if I can put a new next to that class. But why would I? Neighbors and linked. Neighbors. And linked. Okay. Um, oh, right. Uh, engine common. Initialize. Instead of this, it'll be cell, whoopsie, cell grid indices theme. And then an engine. Hmm. That is kind of weird theme is declared here. Okay, this will go in the constructor. Theme. This dot theme equals theme. And here theme, this dot theme. And engine will pass in New fast engine, old themes default. And then up here, old themes minty. Linked will be old themes freon. Minty, alive, old themes, night, and then old themes, uh, gleam. Pretty sure I don't like most of these um, themes that I've already got. But it sure is helpful to be able to tell everything apart. Cannot find theme. Open Firefox again, because I got no stack trace. Oops. Engine common 1076. Engine common 107. Ah, theme, this dot theme. There it is. A little slower now. Huh. Does render need the theme? No, it doesn't. Interesting. So I'm just keeping an eye on the uh, speed of the simulation. 
fluctuates quite a bit. I wonder why. Could be all these open files, for all I know. It could be literally anything. <laughs> Okay, linked. Oh, for Pete's sake. That's fine. That's fine. A little overzealous there with the Predifier. Okay. Converted engine to a class. The base class has no implementation. The subclasses, well, the base class now sits in engine common and has no implement. Hmm. Yeah, that's fine. The subclasses extend the base class with their implementations. All data sits outside the classes in the global scope, technically. Fine by me. Naive. So, we know more or less what has to happen in all of these, but we want it, we want this naive implementation to resemble the actual code that we had earlier in the project. So to do that, I'm going to go back to Epis, to strategy one and go right before that and look at the selected version of Engine.js from back then. There it is. So this is our old code. And in here, we can just grab this for loop and paste it into update for every cell, apply the rules Yep. And in draw to Ah right, we didn't have a render function back then, so I'll have to figure that out, but that's not too bad. Okay. Now the reset code, there's no reset code. But there are these, old cells, new cells, original cells. Okay. Initialize original cells. There is a reset function. Here it is. Kind of gross. We're probably going to have to revisit this. 
and then in here we're gonna grab this for every cell and this switch And then we're going to switch on it. Case head and case tail. IDs dot push Y times width plus X otherwise tail IDs dot push gross <laughs> Engine is naive. Let's see those errors. Undefined is not an object. Let's gonna switch to Fire. Uh, let's go ahead and switch to Firefox because Safari's errors are not great. Data.cells is undefined. Debug. data cell states old state is not defined state Okay. That's the ID. Swap. No, we don't. We don't swap. There we go. So let's go into paper.js and see what we get from update. Drawings, active pixels. Okay, generation is zero, simulation speed, width, height, head IDs. Okay. And then tail IDs. All right, that looks good. And then it looks in cell grid indices, which is empty for those things. So we need to populate cell grid indices. So 
So cell grid indices equals array width times height dot fill dot map I to I. Well, we got the heads now. Turbo is helping this implementation a lot. Okay. Now what? The paper... Draw base layer. Cell grid indices. Oh! Okay. So... We do need to construct cell grid indices after all. And we're going to do it the old-fashioned way. If state is not equal to dead, cell grid indices dot push that. New cells is undefined. All oh, right, original cells. Hmm. Oh, okay. Okay, so this needs to become a map. Okay. Const cell grid indices. indices XY2 cell grid index here we go Okay, so now we have a map in here. And that should allow us to map the positions. There we go. <laughs> okay. I feel like this was slower when we began, but I'm not going to question it. We have just implemented our first... I just did it again. Our first um, historical engine. 
reset these. Slowpoke. Okay. Um, knock it out of the... Here we go. Model every cell in the sim. Render every cell. We're kind of doing that. We're iterating over every cell to decide whether they are heads or tails. Um, nested adjacency loop. Yep, we've got that. Next up is alive. So I'm actually going to take naive. I'm going to put it in alive. Discard that as a jumping off point for the next implementation. Excuse me. <sighs> Cats, what are you going to do? What was I talking about? Ah, right. Implemented Naive Engine. And... Copied its implementation into the Alive Engine. Cool. All right. Now then, the Alive Engine ignores dead cells completely. So it has that list of non-dead cells, loops over them, renders every head and tail. OK. Easy peasy. Strategy one, just iterate over the non-dead cells open selected version. So it has non-dead cells. Yep. What does it do with non-dead cells? 
it constructs There we go. And non-dead cells is basically a replacement for XY. Mm-hmm. Okay, so these are going to be called non-dead cells. this like so I think This bump goes down like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then in here, we're going to do the same iteration in render. Const state. Hmm, old cells instead of new cells. So, oh, I'm messing with alive by mistake, whoopsie. dead cells. And then in here, for every non-dead cell, we've got the index. We're not going to worry about the index for now. Whoa, but we need it, don't we? Yep. just push in index. No. I. Let's try that. Engine equals naive. Engine equals alive. There's an error. What's the error? Line five. There we go. A live engine is not defined. A live engine. There we go. Nums new cells y. New cells in line one oh two.
Okay, the issue is in, so let me undo Um, here, I'll, revert the changes to the render function, old cells y is undefined. So non-dead cells Okay, so non-dead cells is not what I thought it was. I should bring back the... Okay, we're going to revert. Okay, alive JS. We're not going to assume that x, y to cell grid index is the same as non-dead cells. But we will construct them at the same time. So for height, for width, if it's not dead, then non-dead cells dot push. Yeah, these are totally different. This is a mapping. This is a sparse array. Cell grid indices is interesting. Const equals empty dot length equals zero. Turn dot slice. Okay, there we go. So now non dead cells is a list of all the indices. We go back to the update function. And then in render, we iterate the same way. Okay, this is looking better. Let's give that a shot. Interesting. Oh, that's why. Render was overwriting changes. There we go. And we can see it's a little bit faster. It's so good to have that metric. Oh, you guys can't see it. One second. It's good to have that metric in the corner. Okay. corresponds with our 
performance improvements back then. Let's just take another look at it. This is index. Also, I'm going to just, there we go. Cool, looks good. All right. And we're doing good on time too. Although the next couple of engines are gonna be a little difficult to bring back from the grave. Right. Is it true to this description? Only the model the non only model the non-dead cells. Loop over the non-dead cells. Switch nested adjacency loop render every head and tail. We are doing that. I do want to see what happens when we reset. Is that the same as up here? It is. Okay, yes. We've effectively captured it. Implemented a live engine. Next is the neighbor's engine. I do think that I can do this. Neighbor's engine. And we look, let's push what we've got. List cell neighbors ahead of time. Use objects as structs to store data. This is a whopper. We made a lot of changes here. Oh, you know what? Hang on. Strategy one. Renamed draw to to render. Replacing note in about box. Were there any major changes here? Dead becomes dead. We skipped that. Okay, so actually, in alive, we got rid of that in alive. Fair enough. Yep. Changing history, why not? Force push, because nobody is pulling during the live stream, because nobody's watching during the live stream, not tonight. Hey, nobody. Oh, there are a couple people watching. <laughs> Good evening from the skybox. I'm glad you can... Uh, yeah, just uh, maybe hold off on pulling from my repo uh, until the Switch s stream finishes. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> this is all fine. Wire tail head. Okay, so alive is the way it was. Right, so now we look again at... Strategy two, neighbors, minor refactor and engine, turbo. My guess is that doesn't matter, but we are going to look at this version of the engine. Cool. All 
All right. Excuse me, I got a neck crick. Okay. We're going to do that. I wonder if we still need this. Probably. We no longer have non-dead cells, so we can get rid of that. We do, however, have the make cell function. Yeah, we probably don't need this anymore because we have cells that actually state what their X, Y, and index is. We don't need that after all. We just have num cells and cells. Const cells equals that. Cells.length equals zero. Cool. We make all the cells. Num cells increments. We create their neighbors. That's cool. But we do need to return cells.map cell cell.index, I think. Uh, reset. Is pretty straightforward. Cells.for each, cell dot cell state, yep. And then the update function is totally different, kind of, sort of. For every cell, apply the rules. And then in render, We'll just see. I'm gonna hold off on that for now. Let's see if neighbors properly initializes. Doesn't look like it does. Okay. Return cells.map cell index. I think we want cell dot y times width plus cell dot x. We do! Cool. I don't know what this color theme is. Um, at the moment I'm not too bent out of shape about it. Gleam, yeah. Doesn't really feel like it. Okay, so now we need to iterate over the cells right. It's going to be just like this. Switch cell.old state. Oh, right. 
naive, new state, uh, new cells. This becomes old cells. Same here, old cells, I think. Anyway, um, bu -bu -bum. tail head, get rid of wire. Um, we actually just carry this up. I think that'll do the trick, but possibly not. Oh, geez. Yeah, they're there. They're just very, very faint. What is up with this? Um, Okay, sorry, hang on. So, uh, common. Engine common. Gleam is black, yellow, white, orange. Is old state even a thing? It is. Okay, cell.state. Ugh. Hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. Let's try bright instead. There we go. That's more like it. Okay. Is this an adequate representation? Model cells as objects with fields. Yep. Loop over non-dead cells. That's what they are. Yep. Switch neighbor loop. Switch, and this is a neighbor loop because we're iterating over the number of neighbors rather than the spatial neighborhood. And render every head, every tail. Okay. Yeah, I'll test the alive as well. Alive. Ah, I was wrong. Alive and naive were correct. Let's try it again. Hmm. Actually, I'm not so sure. One. Okay. Clearing cache. <laughs> And step one, okay. And then naive. Step, okay. And then neighbor, neighbors. Step, all right, everything's fine. implemented neighbors engine. One to go, and then I might try to get the, um, the UI in place that could hot swap between these, which would also put the um, 
restored render does anyone use restored render sorry one second um, I think it defeats the purpose engine restored render it does not linked doesn't exist yet naive doesn't use it yet or at all alive doesn't use it mm. yeah they do need to be implemented though implement res support for restored render in reset of all engines <laughs> alive restored render engine restored render linked well no point in that naive neighbors you don't use it cool okay and that thing should not even have a wrong name anyway. <clears throat> For restoring state. Transferring state between engines in reset. In it. Yeah, I'll look into it. Okay, where was I? This one, model linked lists with object fields. Okay, oh. Remove, restored, render, um, Okay. Yep. Argument from engine initialize function. Right? Yeah. Right, so then strategy three is the linked lists, and strategy four is the separated grid indices. rather the contiguous buffer of integers, which is what we've got. That's the fast one. Okay, so strategy three, no changes to engine here. So we're going to look at engine in strategy three. And here's where it should start to represent or resemble what we've already got in engine JS. So I'm going to use engine.js as a basis for this linked.js.
linked engine. Using that, num cells you use, cells you use. Is this any different? Wait a minute, first. This is the wrong one. This is the one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, next. That's what we want to see. So. We don't have any of these. We have this. I don't think I did that right. Let's try that again. Everything in here. Boom. And I'll have to return I will return a map of cells to their index. In reset, First head is null, first tail is null, last head is null, last tail is null for each cell. Okay. And then update. go. And reset and render. Okay. Render, I'll need to figure out. This might be fine though. Cell is first head. Cell isn't null. Cell isn't null. Cell equals cell dot next. Is that a pattern? It is. First tail. And then I think I just do the same thing as neighbor. Cell dot index. See how that works. Engine equals linked. Immediate error. Redeclaration of let generation. 
You don't need to be here. Looking good so far. Step. Oops, I'm typing into the console. Step. There we go. Reset. Didn't take long at all, huh? engine into a new file called fast engine wireworld js default is fast or sorry flat flat engine engine js becomes flat and fast engine should be flat engine okay Safari. Four thousand steps per second. Let's instead try engine equals naive. Three hundred eighteen steps per second. And let's try alive. Kind of similar, actually. Interesting. Let's try neighbors. Nice. Up to 570. Let's try linked. Nice. And then lastly, fast. I meant flat, but whatever. It's the default one. Boom. Cool. Okay. <sighs> Feeling accomplished. Renaming engine.js to flat.js the flat engine. Let's run prettier. No complaints. Cool. So now engine selection is a finished feature, so we are going to merge it in. And boom. And delete engine selection and the remote branch. Bye bye. Okay. Let's see, episode nine. Cool, 
Yep. Um, so, we've got all these cool engines that sit side by side and only differ in their implementation. Now let's get it so that you can hot swap between them. And to do that, we've got rebuild engine, cool, and Oof, got a shoulder ache. I'll be back in a minute.
thanks for waiting. Now what were we talking about? We were talking about recreating the engine. When a player switch a visitor, excuse me, switches between different engines. Well, first of all, um, I think I want a select, right? Yup. Just curious. Mm -hmm. Where is my drop down going to live? I feel like it's going to be right next to the turbo button. Select class equals engine title equals <clears throat> engine hmm. choose engine. Choose engine. And then it needs stuff in it, doesn't it? It needs a label. This WW caption thing isn't going to cut it. Something like this instead. Oops, not generation. Um, hmm. Oh, I'm missing a whole bunch of labels. <laughs> okay. Um, I will cross that bridge when I reach it. Sliders and selects should have labels in accessibility mode. Okay, for now I'm just going to worry about the select. Got to brush up on what goes in a select. Probably something called an option, MDN select tag option. Okay. Cool. Flat. 
flat. How many do I have again? Up here, one, two, three, four, five, five. Naive, linked, neighbors, alive. Okay. Cool. Cool. Okay. So then GUI needs const selects equals collect UI select. There it is. MDN select set. Selected. I think that would be a good idea. Select element is notoriously difficult to style productively with CSS. Challenge accepted. Um, hopefully I don't do it in a way that breaks the internet. Here we go. Jeez. Here we go. No, that's not it. Jeez. Okay. HTML select element. Thought so. Those two pages ought to link to each other. There's all the properties that we already read. Methods, add blur, check validity. Input event. Dot add event listener input. Event. But also, value selected index. Is 
there an alternative to selected index? Oh, selected options. No, that's read only. Oh, here we go. There we go. Okay, I'm going to try that. Add. Options. Option. Add. Options. Dot. Hmm. Collect UI is based on class name, isn't it? It is. Is it just bare? Yes, yes it is, okay. Class equals same as value. Okay, so then I can reference those. I'm just going to try this first. That did nothing. Back to here. Add. Adds an element. Oh, no, that's not what I want. JavaScript, HTML select element, selected option. Set selected option. Oh, for Pete's sake. Oh, no, 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 here we go. Huh. Dot value equals options dot naive dot value. did it. And that's weird. But I guess that's how they always worked. And I am piggybacking off of um, elements that are supposed to be in a form for my UI. Um, and there is the event.
it does not indicate whatsoever what its value is. But maybe it will report it like that. And it does. Okay. So. State.engine name equals that. Okay. Initial state engine name options dot flat dot value. Okay, const engine name equals state dot engine name. Hmm. Const speed turbo engine name equals state. Object dot assign state turbo engine name. Find console dot log initial state dot engine name flat. Hmm. State equals Oh, that's why. If turbo isn't null, state.turbo equals turbo. I think I just fixed a bug. If engine name isn't null, state.engine name equals engine name. Flat, that is correct. There we go. And then turbo dot checked equals state dot turbo. Cool.
So then state changed event gets broadcasted up. Here we go. State changed. Console.log engine name GUI.state.engine name. Nothing. That's weird. There we go. Okay, so instead of default, we're going to do flat, flat. Um, no, that's, that's not necessary. Default flat, flat, flat. Uh, yeah. Cool. If engine name isn't GUI.state.engine name, swap engines. GUI.state.engine name. Const swap engines equals engine name. Hmm. Rebuild engine is only called here. Eh, whatever. Okay. If engine is null, then terminate it, remove the listener. Engine post message type save. Save file. Save file equals engine. Oh, sorry, event dot data dot args zero. that there. Swap engines is going to be kind of oddly asynchronous. 
engine.add event listener message listen for save file let save file equal null const listen for save file equals event right up here event if event dot data dot type is equal to save file save file is that remove event listener and immediately rebuild the engine engine name equals oh name engine name equals name rebuild engine and then engine.post message hmm rebuild engine save file save file equals null message initialize in, <coughs> excuse me initialize with data and then data nope so it's gonna be restore args save file there we go so now engine is going to listen for a restore or a save message and it's going to emit a save file. Okay, engine common API save this dot save dot bind this um, restore this dot restore dot bind this. And restore is probably just gonna call data. Yes, yes it is. So no need for this. Oof. You restored render. These don't exist anymore. Oh, but it needs to reset, right? No, this does need to still exist. just shouldn't be called a restored render. This is fine, fine, fine. Okay. Restored render should be called save Save file, save file, save file, save file.
save file. Okay. Okay. Uh, engine common save file. Okay. Reset uses save file. And so we now need save and restore. Let's see. No, we don't need restore. Restore becomes initialize args. Oh, okay. Yes, we do need restore. Okay. Restore, save file. In, uh, this dot initialize save file dot data Ugh. that's unfortunate can we do any better than that You know what? Do we need this? Ugh, yeah, yeah, we do. Problem is wireworld.js doesn't hold on to the data that it loads. Because it's a lot of data. Initialize data flat data. Changes all elements to a static value. Never mind. Um, this could be done though in engine common data. Parse file console log data. Let's look at the actual formatting of this stuff. Cell states.
this is save file, and this is like... <clears throat> Sorry, one second. Right. Just trying to wrap this up. So head IDs and tail IDs are a good thing to put in there. Width and height is good. Generation is good. We won't need simulation speed, I don't think. But we do need the cell grid indices, right? Um, no, what we really need... Ugh. We need a common format, and we already have one. It just sucks. Data width, data height. Cell states. Head IDs, tail IDs. Okay. These are free because we already have them. But const cell states equals array. Ugh. What is it? Array height. Dot fill. Dot map. Array width dot fill cell state dot dead. Cell states. Yep. And then we have to iterate over. Ugh, this sucks. Do we really want this? You know what? We will save it. Let cell grid indices.
No. We generate cell states from the cell grid indices. Okay, and then for let y equals zero, y is less than height, y plus plus, for let x equals zero, x is less than width, x plus plus, cell states y times width plus x equals cell grid indices, um, shoot. Ah, no, other way around. Four, let i equal zero, i is less than num cells, i plus plus, and num cells is stupid change where it's like const index equals cell grid indices i const index equals this malarkey cell states y x equals cell state dot wire Right? No. <laughs> All right. New idea. Okay, we don't save the cell indices. But we do save the cell states. Okay, engine common, initialize data, okay. Let original data equal that. Initialize Ugh. And then this is original data generation head IDs, tail IDs. That's what we wanted all along. And then restore does this dot initialize Oh save file um original data
so gross. Yeah, this is fine. Instead of save file equals null, restore equals false. And then here, restore um, data otherwise false. Uh, no, just data. We don't need that. Okay. So initialize is the same as restore. Great. Okay. Restore becomes initialize. Okay, cool. And so initialize data passes it to reset. Reset passes the data into the reset, which contains a head IDs or a tail IDs. Reset, save file. Um, I might as well keep calling it that up here. Yeah. Save file has head IDs or tail IDs. Okay. Of course it's angry at me. Flat engine common. So when save fi file isn't null, let's post a debug. Here, we're gonna actually create a name for that. Up here, const debug, post debug equals Type args. Dot 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 args. Debug. Cool. And in here, post debug, uh, save file. Um, no head IDs, no tail IDs. Right. Save file head IDs or empty. So restored head IDs. Empty, cool.
I see. Const restoring from save equals save file dot here this isn't necessary head IDs isn't null so if restoring from save there we go post debug no need for that Okay. Null is not an object. Data.width. Let's switch over to Firefox. We're really close to getting this to work, so I'm just going to keep at it until it's done. Let's clear cache. There we go. linked. Data is null common 55.3. Oh, geez. Okay. You can't just put it in here. Engine common go to line. I don't know the... Okay, so line 55. Width is data.width. Huh. Post message data. Linked. Event dot data is null. Here we go, event data is null. Event type is message, event data is null. Why? I know why. I never knew it, but handle engine message actually. <sighs> okay. If event dot data dot let's see. Target worker data type is message data is cell states width and height.
render, and before that, also render. Okay. So. Post message. This should be working. It's weird. Engine common, data is null. Width is data dot width. Oh, post debug data. So initialize gets handed nothing. Initialize. Type initialize. Args data. Console.log. Oh, no, that wouldn't be it. Rebuild engine, console.log save file. Null. Oh. <sighs> there we go. it's working it just needs to publish its theme again which would be caught in setup Debug zero, post debug one. Neither. Initializing, 
save file weird Saving. Flat. Okay, saving. Oh, thanks for joining me, Bioroid. Yeah, it's uh, it's some good music to program to. get this far and then in engine common in save post debug sending save file save file sent save file was sent Give it a shot. Linked. Boom. Neighbors. Boom. Okay. Generation 106. Alive. 106. Naive. Okay. So they are not all resetting because they need that code, which I think I am going to do tonight. I'm 15 minutes over, but honestly, I'm on a roll. Um, let's see what changes I've got. That's fine. Yep, that's fine. Don't die from those things. New set. Yep. Okay. So that's what I will do here. Okay. Starting from the naive engine. Save file. If save file that head IDs isn't null, then I will attempt to save for let i equals zero, i is less than head IDs, i plus plus for let i equals zero, i is less than tail IDs, i plus plus. Um, num of these. Const that equals save file dot that dot length. const index equals that and then with that 
So head IDs and tail IDs are like that. Let's see. So again, I need to use this trick. Yep. And then new cells. Let's see. find out. Debug. Are we entering this? We are. Old cells Y is undefined. Ah, okay. So we need to sanitize cell states. Cell states dot for each. Well, If old cells y is null, post debug xy width height old cells y minus 1, old cells y plus 1. Well, no, not plus 1, just in case. ID is missing. Where? I'm 40. 
Oh. Uh. Preve. That's why. <sighs> this should be tail IDs. Cells and new cells is being properly overwritten. This is naive, what? Whoa! Okay, that's interesting. So maybe instead of this... Hmm... Cell grid indices... there. Okay. Dot length equals zero. Const cell grid indices equals. Okay. So maybe it's this. Nope. 
They do have a one-to-one -one correspondence. Hmm. Forty-two. Okay. I is zero. Head ID is two hundred one. Okay. Still messed up. Although maybe that's because I only did it up here and not down here. Tail IDs. Huh. Also that it, it's also weird that it uh, resets the scale.
Aha. For let i equals zero, i is less than old cells dot for each row row dot for each um, here row dot fill cell state dot ugh Restored head IDs equals new set save file dot head IDs dot map ID cell grid indices ID state is equal to cell state dot dead continue if restored head IDs oh right index that if restored head IDs dot has grid index old state cells y x equals cell state dot head else if here continue tail not quite do what it was supposed to. That's so strange.
very strange. It's as though there is an arbitrary offset. Oh, again! Tail IDs map. Ah, oh, boy. Restored tail IDs, tail IDs dot map. Restored head IDs, head IDs dot map. Oh! Const state, oops, let state equal cell state dot wire. State else if state state there we go yep there is still a weird offset Grid index, cell grid indices, is restore data dot head IDs isn't null paper dot JS if data dot is restore then set pin zoom almost as though some of these columns are borrowing from further down. Wow!
Well, whatever it is, it's a mess. So I'm going to dot length is zero, num cells is zero. Yeah, this extracurricular stuff <laughs> is in no condition at the moment to be committed and pushed to the repo. So I'm going to leave it in the to-do. And um, figure out why, well, I should probably use a simpler example, but anyway, um, what's this say? Yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, phew. I guess I made up for, uh, oh, yeah, see a by a road. Um, I guess I made up for my hiatus and my short episode last week with an extra long one this week. Um, thanks for tuning in. Uh, it is good to see that we've got engine equals or not. <laughs> Just going to stash all this. Dash. Jeez Louise. Oh right, I gotta tag it. Um, this is apparently episode 10. There we go. Cool. Okay. Whew. Just got to figure out that stuff that I was messing with right at the end of the stream. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. It's been a long night. Get some sleep, and from the skybox in the corner of the level, this is Res Mason signing off.